Hello, and welcome to the first of a series of tutorials aimed at giving you a structured introduction to some of the colour correction tools found in Sony Vegas Pro. These tutorials apply to anyone using Sony Vegas Pro 8, 9 or 10, and quite probably, although my clairvoyancy skills don't extend that far, any other versions that may come out in the future. Many people who want to apply colour correction to their videos feel that they need to spend large sums of money on certain unnamed third-party programs without realising that many of the looks that they are trying to achieve can actually be created using the tools that Sony provides as part of Vegas. So, this series is aimed at introducing you to those tools and also at giving you a structured approach to using them. In this first tutorial, I'm going to show you two techniques for achieving the same thing with your clips. We're going to be looking at establishing the tonal range. Now what, you may well ask, do we mean by tonal range? Well, to illustrate that, for this tutorial, we're going to use this short clip of Trafalgar Square in London, taken from the steps of the National Gallery shortly before I was kicked off for using a tripod without permission. If you'd like to download this clip as an AVI file, you can find a download link beneath this tutorial at www.firstcreative.tv forward slash Vegas. It's free for you to download and use for practice purposes. In order to demonstrate what I mean by tonal range, I'm going to desaturate the image. In other words, I'm going to remove all the colour so that it's a plain black and white image. As you can see, it's a fairly dull image. There are no true blacks in the image. It never gets any darker than quite dark grey. And there are no true whites either. Again, just some light greys. It may seem like this is a badly shot clip, but in fact, it's good practice to shoot your videos in a low contrast way like this, so that you can preserve all of the colour information in your clip. If you set your camera to a high contrast setting, you'll find that a lot of the dark greys become crushed into a uniform black, and a lot of the light greys become blown out into a uniform white. If you shoot in a low contrast mode, all the colour variation is preserved, and you can change the contrast in post-production. If you think about the complete tonal range of a black and white image as represented by this line of colour with black and white at either end, the tonal range of my black and white clip of London might occupy, say, this range, with dark grey but not black at one end, and light grey but not white at the other. What I want to do in this tutorial is show you how you can extend the tonal range of the image to go from true black to true white without crushing any of the dark greys or blowing out any of the light greys. In other words, I want my clip to go from this to this. In this clip, you can see that the van in the first clip is a light grey, but is a nice bright white in the second, and these posts are dark grey in the first image, but a nice rich black with all their textural details preserved in the second. The principle is the same in colour, except that instead of a single range of shade from black to white, we're working with three separate colour ranges, red, green and blue. I'm now going to return the saturation levels of the clip to how they were to begin with, and you can see that what we're aiming to do is to go from this low contrast flat image to this image, which has a much wider range of lightness and darkness. Again, nice bright whites and deep rich blacks, both of which preserve all their detail. So, let's get started with our first technique. First of all, import your clip onto your timeline and click on the point that you would like to base your colour correction on. I've chosen a frame which has this white van in full view. In the menu at the top of the page, go to View Video Scopes. If it isn't already selected, select RGB Parade from the menu at the top of the window, and you should see something that looks not unlike this. Now, the first time you see this, you might be forgiven for thinking that you had accidentally gained access to the cardiac monitoring unit of your local hospital. But in fact, the RGB parade, which is what this is called, is a fairly simple tool to understand, and one that is incredibly valuable for setting the tonal range of your images. I use it on pretty much every shot I edit, because it allows you to see very subtle gradations in colour that you can't see on your preview window with the naked eye. Let's have a quick look at how it works. The RGB Parade 
is basically a representation of what you see on your screen, divided into red, green and blue pixels. Each column does the same job for each colour. So let's look at the first one, red. The axis along the bottom of the column represents your image from left to right. The vertical axis shows you how all the pixels are distributed at any horizontal point on the screen, with the darkest at the bottom and the brightest at the top. So for example, here we see that there are lots of bright pixels about a third of the way across the screen. If we look at the image in the preview screen, we can see that this is where the white van appears, and so many of these light pixels will correspond to this. Similarly, there are lots of dark pixels in this part of the red column, and if we look at the corresponding area of the screen, we can see a large amount of darker colours. For our purposes, the most important thing to know is where the top of the RGB parade lies and where the bottom of the RGB parade lies. Looking at ours, you can see that there are almost no pixels in the top section and almost no pixels in the bottom section. This is because we currently have a very low contrast image with no true whites and no true blacks. What we want to do is to stretch the RGB parade so that it fills the entire range. To do that, we're going to select Levels from the Video Effects menu and drag an instance of that onto our clip. Now, with the Levels window and the RGB Parade window open next to each other, select Input Start in the Levels window and bring the slider up until the lowest pixel in the RGB Parade reaches zero. Now, do the same with the Input End slider and bring the highest pixels in the RGB Parade up so that they touch the 255 level. Without even looking at your preview window, you know that your image is occupying the full available tonal range and that you are not crushing any lows or blowing out any highs. Now look at the preview window. You can see that the image has instantly become richer. You can toggle back and forth between your corrected view and your source file by clicking this button here. Corrected, uncorrected, corrected, uncorrected, etc. So far, you have corrected the far ends of your tonal spectrum, telling Vegas what is the black point and what is the white point. Vegas then redistributes all the intervening pixels, but does so in a fairly even-handed way, and this can have the effect of leaving the image still slightly flat looking. A simple way to improve the image is to use the gamma slider at the bottom of the levels window. Sony Vegas uses the word gamma slightly inconsistently, but in this context it has the meaning applied to it by professional colorists of mid-tones. Changing the gamma with this setting therefore brightens or darkens the mid-tones. How you use this is much more a question of personal taste than the settings of the black point and white point, which can be precisely fixed using the RGB parade. You can therefore close the RGB parade window at this point. The gamma slider will only affect the distribution of the mid-tones and won't allow you to crush or blow out any of the colours. What I find is that most of my images are improved by lowering the gamma to anywhere between 0.75 and 0.85. As I say, it's down to personal taste, but to my eye, this works pretty well and adds a bit of extra depth to my images. Now go to the preview screen and toggle back and forth between your colour corrected image and the original view. You can see that the image is much richer than before, and also, even though you might not be able to see all the details in the dark greys and light greys, you know from the RGB parade that all of the details have been preserved and should be successfully rendered when you view it on a bigger screen. Now, the technique I have just shown you will greatly improve your footage, but it does have one shortcoming. Although your black points and white points have been accurately set, you only have limited means of controlling the distribution of pixels between those points. In fact, the only choice you have is to raise or lower the midtones, or gamma. This is quite often fine, and I use this technique for many of my clips. However, 